Hi there, and welcome back to my channel. This is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer. In this video, it's the March wrap up. How many books did I read? What genres? And what are my favorite books for the month? In this video, it's something different. In previous monthly wrap ups, I had my favorite three and my least favorite three, and then two books that were almost my favorites, but didn't quite make the mark. From now on, I'm going to have five favorites and then two that are almost favorites. I'm not going to do three least favorites anymore. I want to devote more time to discussing books that I enjoy, not the books I read for the month that were my least favorite. Let's devote more time to enjoyment in these videos. But first, how many books did I read and what is the genre breakdown? I read 21 books in March. What were the genres? General fiction, five books. Thriller, five books. Fantasy, three books. Cozy mystery, five books. Sci-fi, two books. Mystery, one book. As with all other months, my reading seems to be split around different genres. In March, it was cozy mysteries, thrillers, and general fiction that reached top of the genre list. And for March, I spent a lot of time reading books that were on the long list or short list for the Indie Book Awards, which is an Australian book award. I enjoyed many of those books very much, and I do encourage you to look out for those videos and also try those books. Many of the books on the long list and short list are great reads indeed. Now let's go through my favorite five books for March. All that's left unsaid by Tracy Lien. I enjoyed this book a lot. I enjoyed it because of the dialogue and introspection of the main character especially. There are things that make this book worth reading. It's not so much the language used by the author, but it's that dialogue and introspection that make the book what it is. So it's set in Sydney in Australia, and it's set in the 90s, I think from memory, and it's set within a Vietnamese community. And basically the story is, a brother of the main character is murdered. Nobody really knows the story yet, what went on, because people aren't talking, they're scared to talk. A main character goes back home to Sydney, she was living in Melbourne at the time, goes back home to be with her family, and then she also wants to find out what happened. She wants to find out the truth. That's the true basic essence of the story. Through this book, we get to learn a bit about the community, the Vietnamese community at the time in Australia. We learn about their history as well. We learn about what it's like for the parents of the children who came over from Vietnam and how they carry with them all this trauma from their life in Vietnam before they escaped you know, during the Vietnam War. They fled that country, fled their homes, basically their lives, to another land. And they had nothing. They built new lives from nothing, but they still carry that trauma with them. So that's a big part of this book. The book is very well written, but it's those moments of dialogue and introspection that are the best moments in this story. Salt and Skin by Eliza Henry Jones. This was another book I read that I just loved. I love the imagery in this story. It was so well described. It transports you right to where they are in this book, on an island in the Scottish Isles. You feel everything on this island. You feel the wind, the rain, you feel the water, you feel the shore, everything in this story. Also, the characters are so well constructed and so well thought out in this book. The characters feel so real and so lifelike. The characters that are locals to the island, the new characters who move there, the family who moves there, they all feel real. Everything about them, their reactions, their dialogue, the way they move, the way they think, everything about these characters feels very real. And the book is centered around three main characters who are teenagers, basically, and it's their points of view that drive the story. And they're very strong characters, and they all feel different, all feel unique, and also all feel real. I enjoyed this story very much. How to Be Eaten by Maria Edelman. I enjoyed this a lot. It surprised me. I didn't know what to expect with this book, and I had it in my hands to read for quite some time from the library, and I kept reborrowing it, not getting to it. Other books found their way higher in the pile than this book, and eventually I decided, just read it get it over and done with, and read the book, and I loved it. The book is so cleverly done. It's basically about a group of five women who are invited to come to a, 
I guess, a therapy group session that's invitation only, basically. They get invited to this session run by a counsellor. And all these women survive something traumatic in their lives. And their stories are modern day retellings of fairy tales or myths. And they're told very well. The whole book is so well constructed. The characters feel so real. They're also very unique. All their voices are very unique as well. So every character has a unique voice. And they get all get to tell their tale, but using their own voice. So it's a great example of an author writing in different points of view, but using different voices. So it's not the author's voice pretending to be different characters. Every character has their own unique voice. That's one of the big strengths in this story. There's a big twist at the end. There are twists, more twists at the end than during the book. So I prefer books where twists happen all throughout, but I do understand why it's constructed like this, because we have to learn about all the characters' stories first before we get to those twists. So I enjoy this book a lot. I do recommend this very much. The Last Wife by J.A. Baker. I enjoyed this book a lot. It's a thriller. It's set on a small island in the North Sea. But it's not just the thrilling elements and the mystery in this book. It's the island itself, the setting. It feels very gothic in atmosphere. And at times in this book, I was thinking, is this going to be a thriller for the whole book? Or am I going to get a gothic horror? Is it going to change part way through? Is this a book where genres blend and merge through the story? It didn't turn into a gothic horror. It remained a thriller and a mystery. But that setting of the island was so well done, so well thought out. You feel like you're there. Everything about this book is well structured. The mystery is good. The characters are very detailed, very introspective. Sometimes it gets a little bit wordy at certain times in the book. So that's a little bit of a flaw in the story. But that wordiness draws you out sometimes from the story, but you get dragged back into it from the atmosphere and the setting and the mystery element drags you back into the story very quickly. So it's not too bad but I think some of the wordiness could have been taken out and the book would have flowed a little bit better. But on the whole, it's a great mystery. The atmosphere is so chilling, so gripping, and the characters do feel real. I do recommend this. You'll feel transported to the island. You'll feel like you're there and you will want to read this very quickly. La Fona, written by Otessa Moshfair. Otessa Moshfair is one of my favourite authors and I've discovered her works in the last 12 months. I like every book she's written for different reasons, but in this book, it's different. It's set in historical setting. So we're transported back to medieval times. And usually in her books, we have a main character and then support characters. That's how they're written usually. And the main character is almost always unlikable. And so are the support characters. You don't get many characters in her books that you like. This book, we have different main characters. We have two characters that seem central to the story, and then a lot of support characters, but they are all unlikable for different reasons. But the different setting being in medieval times and just a different range of characters makes for a different book for this author. I did enjoy the story. I enjoyed the plot of it. I enjoyed the fact that the characters have different motivations that sometimes they think are genuine and honest and kind. They think of themselves as being kind at times in this story, even though they're not being kind. But also they have different personality traits that feel very odd. And they feel odd to us, the reader, but to the characters of themselves, they don't feel odd. They feel like they're doing the right thing at all times and doing things that make them feel good. When we, when we read it, we think, why? You know, why would that make you feel good when something terrible is happening? That's the sort of thing and you get in this book. They're the reactions you may feel when you read this book. It's a book that's not for everybody. Tessa Moshfair writes books, I think, that polarize readers a lot. Her works are for everybody. But if you read this, look, I'm not going to guarantee you'll enjoy it. I think you'll either enjoy it or you'll hate it. There doesn't seem to be much middle ground with these books, but I did enjoy it. Now for two books I read in March, didn't make the top five list, but I still think they're great reads. Dirt Town by Haley Scrivener. It's a mystery, and it's about a child abduction. 
the main characters, the main focus of this story are very varied. They're children the same age as the abducted child and also the mother of the child and the police officer, the main detective investigating the case. They're very varied in the main characters, but they're all written very well. This author seems to be able to write characters very convincingly of both genders and all different ages. Not many authors can do that. There are so many authors who write children that don't feel real. Children that are too clever. Children that are too capable. Children that just seem like little adults. And this author doesn't do that. This author writes children that feel convincing. They have their own stories. They feel so real, these children, so well developed and thought out. And they feel very engaging and they're very gripping in their characters for very, very different reasons. I really enjoyed this story. I read it because it's on the long list for best book in an award, Indie Book Awards. That's the reason I read this in the first place, but I'm so glad I read it and I can't wait to see what this author brings out in the future. Curtain Call at the Seaview Hotel, written by Glenda Young. It's book two in a cozy mystery series and it's just as good as book one. I enjoy this series a lot. The mysteries are so well put together and so well thought out. The main characters are so well developed. The three main characters are working in the hotel, one owning the hotel, one being a cook, and one just being a helper in the hotel. They're all so well thought out, and you feel comforted by them all. Some of my favourite moments in this series, and in this book in particular, is when the three main characters meet in the hotel apartment, so the owner's apartment, in the basement of the hotel. They meet there every day to just catch up on their day, also plan the day. But when you're there in those scenes, it feels like you're there and it feels so comforting. You're part of this small circle when discussing things. You're part of their world. You're drawn into their world and into those characters. And I like those moments. They're some of my favourite moments in this book. But the setting, the characters, the mystery, I enjoy all that in this series. And I can't wait to see if more books are released in this series. And there you have a brief rundown of some of my favourite books from the month of March. All these books I enjoyed a lot and I recommend them all for different reasons. I hope you get to read some of them. I will have videos on my channel for all these books. Some will be there already and some will come in the future. But all these books I recommend. I recommend you go out and read them. Get them from the library. Get them from anywhere. Just try them out and read them. Some authors may be new to you. You know, discovering new authors is one of the joys of reading. And as readers, we should always be on the lookout for new voices. On my channel, I review books of all different genres. Check out my channel and subscribe. On the video now is a link to a book I'm sure you'll enjoy.